We have three major updates from SpaceX, let's discuss them one by one. A SpaceX Dragon capsule splashed down in the Atlantic Ocean on October 14, bringing back four astronauts from the International Space Station. The Dragon capsule, named Freedom, left the station five hours before the splashdown, carrying a four-person crew of NASA astronauts Joel Indrin, Robert Hines, Jessica Watkins, and European Space Agency astronaut Samantha Cristoforetti. The four astronauts had spent 170 days in space and completed 2,720 orbits around Earth. Throughout their mission, they contributed to various science and maintenance activities and technology demonstrations. Christofferetti completed two spacewalks with Roscosmos cosmonaut Oleg Ardingev to perform station maintenance and upgrades. The splashdown on October 14 marked the end of the Crew-4 mission, which began on April 27 with a Falcon 9 launch from the Kennedy Space Center. The Crew-4 astronauts departed the station nearly eight days after the arrival of Crew Dragon Endurance on the Crew-5 mission. SpaceX will fly another crew rotation mission for NASA, Crew-6, in February 2023. SpaceX has revised its rideshare program, allowing small satellite operators to launch their spacecraft into orbit at extremely low prices. SpaceX's dedicated SmallSat rideshare mission is a unique launch service that allows multiple small satellite operators to share space on a Falcon 9 rocket. Previously, SpaceX charged a minimum of $2.25 million for up to 150 kilograms of payload and $15,000 for each additional kilogram. The new pricing charges $1.2 million for up to 200 kilograms of payload and $5,000 for each extra kilogram. The company also lowered the minimum mass for spacecraft to fly on its rideshare missions from 200 kilograms to 50 kilograms. Customers have to pay $275,000 for a 50 kilograms payload and $5,500 for each additional kilogram. Previously, customers with small satellites would either have to pay for all the extra capacity they weren't using or arrange their launch services through a third-party aggregator, like Space Flight or Exo Launch. So far, SpaceX has launched five rideshare missions, with the next mission, Transporter 6, scheduled for December. SpaceX continues to expand its Starlink constellation with its 100th launch from Space Launch Complex 40. The mission, dubbed Starlink Group 436, launched on October 20, marked SpaceX's 48th successful Falcon 9 mission of 2022. The rocket's first stage touched down on a drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean a little less than nine minutes after liftoff. It was the 10th flight overall for this particular booster. The 54 Starlink satellites were successfully deployed into a 550 km low Earth orbit a little over 15 minutes after liftoff. Two days before the latest Starlink mission, SpaceX rolled out Starlink Aviation, a service offering high-speed low-latency internet during airplane flights. SpaceX advertises 350 megabits per second of global coverage through a flat panel antenna that customers would install on top of an aircraft. According to SpaceX, passengers can engage in activities previously not functional in flight, including video calls, online gaming, virtual private networks, and other high data rate activities. If Starlink Aviation can live up to SpaceX's promises, it will be much faster than other satellite options, which only offer speeds of up to 100 megabits per second per plane. SpaceX charges $150,000 for the hardware required to connect an airplane to Starlink, with monthly service fees ranging from $12,500 to $25,000. Deliveries to aviation customers are expected to begin in mid-2023, with reservations requiring a $5,000 down payment. Exactly a year after its launch, NASA's Jupiter Trojan asteroid explorer, Lucy, has successfully completed its first of multiple Earth gravity assists. Launched on 16 October 2021, Lucy is on a 12-year journey to study multiple Trojan asteroids up close. Since its launch, Lucy has been operating in cruise mode in a heliocentric orbit around the Sun. NASA will have the spacecraft perform multiple gravity assists around Earth to put it on a path toward Jupiter in order to get Lucy closer to the Trojans. Lucy came just 350 kilometers from Earth's surface on October 16, bringing it closer than most orbiting spacecraft, including the International Space Station. At these distances, Lucy faced a hazardous environment littered with more than 47,000 satellites, chunks of debris, and other objects orbiting Earth. To ensure the safety of the spacecraft, NASA developed procedures to anticipate potential hazards and, if necessary, execute a small maneuver to avoid a collision. The October 16 gravity assist was one of three the spacecraft will rely on to catapult itself to its deep space destinations. The spacecraft will return for a second gravity assist in two years, which will give it the energy it needs to cross the main asteroid belt, where it will observe asteroid Donald Johansson, and then travel into the leading Trojan asteroid swarm. 
Lucy will then return to Earth in 2030 for a third gravity assist to retarget the spacecraft for a rendezvous with the binary asteroid pair, Patroclus Minotius, in the trailing Trojan asteroid swarm. Please see my previous video for more information on the Lucy spacecraft and its mission to the Trojan asteroids, link in the description. NASA is ready to resume spacewalks outside the International Space Station after completing an investigation into water found in a spacesuit during a spacewalk earlier this year. NASA halted a routine spacewalk in March after European Space Agency astronaut Matthias Moore noticed an unusual buildup of water inside his helmet. In August, NASA returned the malfunctioned spacesuit to Earth as part of the agency's SpaceX CRS-25 mission, and the agency has been investigating the cause of the moisture for the past few weeks. After several weeks of investigation, NASA confirmed that there were no hardware failures within the suit, and the cause of the water in the helmet was likely due to integrated system performance, where several variables such as crew exertion and crew cooling settings led to the generation of comparatively larger than normal amounts of condensation within the system. Upon the implementation of several fixes, NASA has scheduled three future spacewalks to complete solar array installations outside the ISS. The first of three spacewalks is scheduled for mid-November. Relativity Space is a California-based American aerospace manufacturing company, which is currently preparing for the maiden launch of its 3D-printed expendable Terran-1 rocket. In addition, the company is also working on a fully reusable 3D-printed Terran-R rocket. Terran-1, the world's first entirely 3D-printed rocket, will be capable of carrying small satellite payloads, and Terran-R will be capable of launching payloads weighing up to 20,000 kilograms into low Earth orbit. Relativity Space recently revealed plans to build one of the largest rocket engine testing facilities in the United States. Through an agreement with NASA, the company is significantly expanding its facilities and infrastructure at Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. The partnership agreement focuses on 153 acres located near the E-4 test complex, giving the company room to test its entirely 3D-printed EON-R engines for its Terran-R launch vehicles. Relativity has already begun ground clearing work for several new engine test stands, a full-scale second stage stand, office buildings, and a vehicle hangar. The company is already testing EON-R components across its E2 test complex, and full EON-R engine tests are scheduled for late 2023 at its newly announced facility expansions. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. If you're wondering why there haven't been any pre-launch Starship tests at Starbase in the past few days, it's because SpaceX is proceeding carefully with Starship tests. According to Elon Musk, if an anomaly occurs at the pad during testing, it will set back Starship's progress by six months. As Musk fears, issues, in general, are expected during full-stack tests, which will begin with a series of cryo-proof tests and will likely culminate in a 33-engine static fire. We can only hope that an explosion doesn't occur at the pad during the test campaign. SpaceX has never simultaneously test-fired more than seven Raptor engines at Starbase. So, the 33-engine test will give SpaceX a chance to see how well all of those engines and associated systems work together. Furthermore, firing all 33 of the booster's Raptor engines will help validate computer simulations of what the exhaust environment will be like and how well the orbital launch mount sound suppression system will deaden the sound during the test. Moreover, full-stack static fires provide opportunities to observe how well the thermal protection system tiles remain attached to the ship during engine start and firing. If this coming week's full-stack cryogenic test goes well, the static fire test campaign could start a few days later. SpaceX will initially try to static fire a few of the engines on Booster 7 before moving incrementally up from there to eventually firing all 33 engines simultaneously. SpaceX has to successfully complete all the pre-launch tests before moving on to the orbital test flight, and if everything goes as planned, the inaugural Starship orbital flight will happen in late 2022 or early 2023. To everyone's surprise, SpaceX de-stacked Ship 24 and Booster 7 on October 16, without any apparent reason. I think the cause of the de-stack is one of the following two reasons. On October 13, SpaceX attempted to conduct a full-stack cryo-proof test of Booster 7 and Ship 24. However, the test was called off just as teams were about to fill the vehicle with cryogenic liquid nitrogen. Later, teams were spotted rushing to the launch pad and climbing onto the Starship's quick disconnect arm, hinting that there were some issues with the ship's QD mechanism. Even though SpaceX erected scaffolding around the ship's QD panel to inspect and fix the issue, it was later dismantled. Therefore, it can be assumed that the problems were not resolved that night, and the ship was brought to the ground for further inspection and fixing. But not much work has been done on Ship 24 after the D-Stack, which led me to consider a second reason. 
For the past few days, there have been reports of strong winds at the Starbase. Per a SpaceX sign at Starbase, a wind exceeding 28 miles per hour is considered heavy wind. Last week, Starbase was hit by wind gusts that exceeded 31 knots, or 27 miles per hour, and this may have forced SpaceX to destack Ship 24. Since SpaceX is proceeding carefully, they might have chosen to bring the ship down until the wind conditions are favorable for a full stack. Whatever the reason behind the D-stack, SpaceX finally restacked Ship 24 atop Booster 7 on Thursday morning. The entire stacking operation took nearly an hour to complete. You can see from this close-up shot how the stage separation mechanism locks Ship 24 and Booster 7 together during full stack operations. After fully securing the prototypes together, SpaceX performed a Starship quick disconnect attach and full speed retraction test to ensure the system is working as expected. A Raptor engine was delivered to the launch site on Thursday evening. A center engine was removed from Booster 7 on Friday morning, and minutes later, the newly delivered Raptor engine was installed into the booster. While Ship 24 and Booster 7 get ready for tests on the orbital launch mount, Starship 25 is getting ready to start its test campaign. SpaceX rolled out the prototype from the build site to the launch site on Wednesday evening. As you can see from this Lab Padre rover cam footage, the ship has yet to receive its six Raptor engines. Also, on top, you can see the payload bay door, which is designed to deploy Starlink satellites into orbit. The payload bay door of Ship 24 was permanently closed last month, indicating that the ship will not carry any payloads to orbit. Ship 26 will also most likely not carry any payloads to orbit, and the case of Ship 25 is still unknown. Ship 25 was lifted and placed on the suborbital launch pad A with the help of a crane on Thursday morning. The pad was modified a few months ago by SpaceX to conduct Starship cryoproof and structural stress tests. During the structural stress test, six hydraulic rams installed under the pad will simulate the thrust of six Raptor V2 engines, while Ship 25 is loaded with cryogenic liquid nitrogen. When Ship 25 successfully passes its structural tests, it will be rolled back to the construction site for the installation of Raptor engines before being brought back to the pad for static fire testing. The road closures notice and the Marine Safety Information Bulletin suggest that Ship 25's cryoproof tests and Ship 24's full stack tests will begin next week. Just as SpaceX tested Ship 24 and Booster 7 in quick succession in August, next week, we might witness back to back full stack and Ship 25 tests at Starbase. At Starbase build site on Wednesday night, teams moved the forward dome section of Ship 26 into the high bay for stacking. The nose cone section of the ship was moved into the high bay on Thursday evening. Both sections were stacked together on Friday morning. The methane tank section of Booster 10 continues to grow inside the wide bay. The methane tank is now 9 out of 13 rings tall. The storage tank currently under construction adjacent to the Starship launch tower at Kennedy Space Center received its top cover on Friday morning. This could be a water storage tank or a propellant storage tank. Three storage tanks were recently removed from the Starship portion of Pad 39A. They are currently being readied for shipment by barge in the near future. They might be transported to SpaceX's Massey's facility located 7.5 kilometers from Starbase. The tanks will be used to store liquid nitrogen required for test tank cryoproof tests at Massey's. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.